Hi, Jody Moss up here with Cruiser TV's third episode, The Bob Bitchin' Interview. This episode is brought to you by Just Marine Boating Safety Products. We know there must be more to this. We said that love could conquer anything. Well, now's the chance to give these words the meaning. I'm at the Strictly Sail Pacific show in Richmond, California, where I talk with the legendary Bob Bitchin and his wonderful wife, Jody Lipkin. And then later in the episode, I also sit down and talk with Jesse and Katie about their two-year adventure sailing America's Great Loop. Later, our featured vlogger, White Spot Pirates. So stay tuned. And now, Bob Bitchin publisher of Cruising Outpost magazine and former publisher and producer of Latitudes and Attitudes. Look at what I've got. I've got Bob Bitchin here with me. Thank you. And Thank you. Yeah, excited to, to sit here and, and chat with the legend. <laughs> legend in my own shower, yes. So, so Bob, I would love to hear a little bit about your story and how you came into the sailing world, how you came into doing what you do now, and how Bob Bitchin came about. Well, first of all, I was not a natural born sailor. Uh, Bob Bitchin was born uh, in about 1978 uh, when I was working out with Tommy Chong at Gold's Gym in Santa Monica and he was making an album called Up and Smoke with Cheech and, Cheech and Chong. I remember it. And the first thing was they needed a name for their their personality that was going to be on the Let's Make a Dope deal. And so <laughs> they, so uh, uh, at that time, my name with the club that I rode with was Bob Bitchin. Wow. And uh, it's not my real name. <laughs> and um, so they used it in the album, uh, um, Up and Smoke. Yeah. And Perfect. let's make it, let's make a dope deal. Here's our first Bob Bitchin, what's your name? Starts with a B, ends with a B, you know, and I really liked it. So anyhow, I kind of got stuck with that name, and then I was working for Evil Knievel as a bodyguard, and when he went into the canyon, I had to get a real job, and when I was working for him, most of the people I met were in magazines or television. Yeah. So I started talking to some of the people that I had met there, and I ended up starting to write for um, Street Chopper magazine, which was the first one, and I was writing under the name Bob Bitchin. Hmm. Then uh, Easy Rider started, and I did a, a couple of uh, issues with them, and then I decided I needed my own magazine. Yeah. So I started a magazine called Biker Lifestyle, cool. which later became Biker. And I published that for a long time, and what it let me do was ride around the country on a motorcycle taking pictures of naked girls, which was a tough <laughs> job when you're in your 20s. You know? Yeah, but, darn. I know, it wasn't easy. But I put up with it yeah, oh, okay. and ended up owning um, the magazine. Yeah. And then, um, as it as it grew, I started a sub. There was a subculture of, of motorcycling tattoos. Mm -hmm. So I started Tattoo Magazine in 1980. In 1986, I sold both of them to Easy Rider. I was living on a boat, and now you say, "What was a sleazy biker doing on a boat?" Okay. <laughs> One day, I was down at the marina, and I was I was 30 years old. I wasn't I wasn't a kid when I started sailing. And I saw a boat going up for sale. Mm -hmm. And I walked over and talked to the guy, and I ended up buying the boat. I'd never been out on one before. Um, for the next 35 years, I lived aboard. Wow. Um, I fell in love with the lifestyle. Wow. And one day, I get a call from a friend of mine who's working on a tall ship called uh, Stone Witch. They were blockading Diablo Canyon when they were building the nuclear plant there. Yeah. Jane Fonda was on the boat. They arrested her and her boyfriend. <laughs> and then they were going to seize the boat. So uh, they called me up and asked me if I had any money. I said I did. So they sailed from, from Diablo Canyon down to Redondo where I was, picked me up, and we sailed out of the country so they couldn't seize the boat. Wow. And then we spent three months sailing to Guatemala. Wow. And there was seven guys and my girlfriend. <laughs> so anyway, we spent three months. It changed my life. Um, the, the, the motorcycle lifestyle, a lot of drugs involved. Yeah. Uh, it got me away from the drugs because when you're out on a boat, you get a natural high. Yeah. And doing drugs is just a waste, and 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 you get paranoid and everything else. I was going to say, and it's hard to see, probably have your wits about. It's you hard to concentrate. Yeah. Yeah. So, 
the more I sailed, and, and from that point on, I, I lived on a boat for the next 35 years. Wow. Um, sailed for the first 10, 15 years on four or five different boats. I sailed down to Mexico every two years. I sailed down, fly back, do an issue on my magazine, fly back. Then finally in 86, I sold the magazine to Easy Rider yeah. and uh, got on my boat, The Lost Soul, which I'd had mm. for about 10 years at that time. It's a 68 foot catch, wow. uh, 42, cool, 42 tons. Yeah, yeah, it fit me. Yeah. Uh, actually, I had a company called Two Lost Souls oh, wow. and we used to sell motorcycle parts. Oh, wow. And we had a flag and the flag had a picture of the Reaper yeah. with angel wings and it said <laughs> two lost souls huh. so I had the flag the banner flying on the boat and one day a guy came out and he says oh this is the lost soul I thought, that's the perfect name for a boat yeah so that's what we named it yeah perfect and um, over the next 10 years in and out of Mexico a number of times and then to Hawaii and back I've sailed to Hawaii seven times uh, there and back uh, fell in love with the lifestyle. I hated being inshore then. After a while, you get to where you just want to be out at sea. Because out at sea, your only worry is what's the next meal. Yeah. When you're in town, you're worrying about insurance. Where's, where, is somebody stealing my car? Is it? When you're out at sea, everything's there and it's contentment. Yeah. And if a storm comes in, it's exciting. How can you, how can you feel a sense of accomplishment? if you don't accomplish something. Mm. And you can't accomplish something sitting in your living room chair. No. You can't accomplish something reading a book or watching television. In order to get a real sense of accomplishment, you have to do something. Yeah. You have to face some sort of danger or some sort of trial, conquer it, and then you get Live this. to tell the story. <laughs> you get this. Yeah. Well, you know, if you die, you die. Yeah. I mean, honestly, everybody, you know, every, there's only two dates but of your you life on your on your on your tombstone yeah. the day you were born the day you were die and neither one of those mean anything mm -hmm. it's the dash mm -hmm. in the middle mm -hmm. I'm on a very fat dash <laughs> and I don't care when this date is yeah. I know what this date was yeah. and I mean I'm 72 years old now I feel like I'm 40 Wow and wow. it's because the adventure mm. if you live adventure it keeps you alive if you don't, you slowly die. And so anyway, we came back. We, uh, I, I, I kidnapped my uh, my bartender yeah. at the Portofino Yacht Club. <laughs> bartender, you gotta have a bartender I everywhere said, you go with you. <laughs> I said, Jody, you wanna go to the island? She thought I meant Catalina, I yeah. meant Tahiti. Yeah. So next thing you know, we sailed to Tahiti. Nice. And then we sailed all over the South Pacific. Then we sailed up to Hawaii. Then we decided we wanted to go someplace new because after you see so much white sand, you get tired of it. Yeah. So we spun our chart. Our chart was a globe, and went, <laughs> and our finger landed in Greece. Oh, so wow. we said, "Let's go to Greece." And yeah. we just happened to be halfway around the world from Greece. So first we Another sailed. Half the world around. <laughs> you got to go somewhere. Yeah. yeah. So we sailed from Hawaii back to Redondo so we could piss off our friends. You know, because, you know, yeah. oh, you guys are back. No, we're just stopped into reprovision. We're leaving again. And then we left, went through the Panama Canal, went all through the Caribbean, crossed the Atlantic, went to the Med. Wow. Then after six years, seven years, we ran out of money. Mm. This happens. Mm -hmm. you know. Now, in the and eight, how were you sustaining yourself when you were out there? Selling or? drugs. No, just kidding. <laughs> no, just kidding. No. Um, I was write, writing stories for some of the, the okay, magazines. So, yeah. uh, I had two books in print then, and I owned a head shop that I had since 1974. Yeah. And so we didn't have a lot of money, but we had enough to stay out. Yeah. We'd have friends fly in, and they'd give us $500 a week for groceries. And actually, we'd feed them about $100 worth, and therefore we made $400. We could stay out four more weeks. Perfect. This went on and on and on for um, a total of 10 years. 10 years, wow. And then we were coming back from Europe, and we had a film crew on board from Brussels because they wanted, they thought we were weird, they thought we lived weird. And so they were doing a, a television program for Europe called Other People's Paradise, yeah. Captain Bob. And it was about crazy people who live on boats and sail around the world. They, they sailed with us for six weeks in, in the Caribbean and then six weeks in the Pacific yeah. doing this documentary. And then we ended up in Las Hadas on the way back up the hill coming home. 
And I realized that if, if I didn't, when we get home, if I didn't start paying Jody, then I was going to have to marry her. <laughs> and I figured and you it'd had be no money. <laughs> well, I figured it'd be cheaper to marry her. Yeah. I was wrong. But uh, so anyway, we uh, we we got married when we got home. Perfect. And then my mm -hmm. two best friends, Bob Clark and Keith Ball, Bob Clark started Street Chopper Magazine, which mm -hmm. was the first custom motorcycle magazine. Keith yeah. Ball was the editor of Easy Rider for 30 years. Yeah. They're my two best friends. We sat down and, well, I have to do something. I have to make a living somehow because I had $10,000 on my American Express card and no job. Yeah. And they said, why don't you start a magazine like you did, Biker, oh, only do yeah. it for boaters. Yeah. Done. It. <laughs> yeah, that was we a started no Latitudes and Attitudes. Yeah. Became the second largest magazine in the in the industry. Seventeen years. Wow. And then, uh, wow. as I was approaching. Seventeen years. Yeah. As I was approaching uh, seventy, I decided, you know what, we need to retire so we can go back out. We found a buyer. Unfortunately, they were con men. No. We lost everything. Yeah. Went bankrupt, lost our boats, lost everything. Yeah. It, we were sitting in our house about ready to lose it. And that's when I learned the miracle of you can't lose everything. Mm -hmm. Because 900 of my readers of Latitudes and Attitudes sent me $250 each to start a new magazine. I was in bankruptcy. Wow. And that's where Cruising Outpost wow. started. Wow. That was four years ago, and we are now the biggest selling magazine in the industry. Crazy, hey? Yeah, you never know. And yeah. so when you think you've lost everything, yeah. you haven't. Yeah. All, you, all you lose is money when that happens. Yeah. And, and uh, just, and, but having, you know, it just it says a lot, too, to the testimony of your character and your personality. Well, because, I'm a character owner. But, <laughs> not, but not everybody would do that for someone, though. No, that, right? it, it blew so, me away. Quite, quite yeah. frankly, I was sitting up. We have, we have a, a, a ranch up in the Sierras that we were about to lose. And I was thinking, well, you know what? We can go find a Catalina 22 and move on it and move down to Mexico. And I get $1,500 a month Social Security, 70 years old. I should be able to live on that. And then the surprise came. Then, then, then all of these people who now, when you're down in the show, you'll see people wearing a, a, a cruising outpost yeah. hat. And it's got a little circle on the side. It says Founder okay. Circle. Those okay, are the 900 people. There, those are my founders. They actually owned the magazine for the first year. Then they turned it over to me after the bankruptcy was over. So, um, so tell me, how did, how did the TV show kind of come about? Well, it was really funny. At a boat show in, here in Oakland, actually the Oakland Boat Show, yeah. we're sitting at a table, me and Darren, who was um, ended up being my producer, but he was into video. And he and I were sitting talking about creating a, a TV show. And Eric Snow was playing, and he, and he took a break. And he came over and he sat down, and with him was Gary and a guy named Yellow Shoes. And we're talking about to, what do we need to do a TV show? And uh, Darren said, "Well, we need at least eighty-five thousand dollars." And I'm like, eh, "I don't have that much money." <laughs> and Jake says, "I'll put it up." He owned a chain of mortuaries. Oh wow! <laughs> so he had the money, yeah. and he wanted to do something interesting. That, yeah. <laughs> and then I said, "Well, we need we need a hostess." And Gary whips out his wallet and says, "This is my daughter, my daughter Courtney. She's now on Fox on Sports wow. Show." Wow. I said, okay, she's hired. <laughs> and then um, Darren says, I'm going to need music. And Eric says, well, you can have all my music if you give me photo, if, you know, credits at the yeah, end. Yeah. The wow. show started. One year later, we premiered the first episode at the Oakland Boat Show. Wow. And we went on, to, went on to produce 65 episodes over five years. Wow. And it's on Vimeo now. Yeah. So, Very cool. Good. Very cool. And now... A message from our sponsor. Keep your crew alive with the Man Overboard self-inflating Dan Bowie. Immediately after your crew goes overboard, just throw the Dan Bowie as is into the sea toward your crew. The Dan Bowie automatically inflates, which makes your Man Overboard significantly easier to see and rescue. With automatic stroke for night use, whistle for fog, an 8-foot fluorescent yellow streamer which enhances daytime visibility against a cluttered background, also comes with a large drogue to retard drift.
Check out this safety item and many other safety items at just-marine.net. Jody Lipkin. Yes. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome. Yeah. <laughs> nice to be here. Yeah. Well, thank, thank you, Jody. Yes, and thank you, <laughs> Jody. Um, I would lo- like. I had mentioned to you earlier. Mm-hmm. I am excited to be able to share lots of different cruising stories, but especially, right. particularly those with women who have been in it. And, okay. and I know from talking to Bob a little bit uh, just a while ago, you two have been in this journey together for quite some some time yeah. now. You know, Bob and I met in uh, the late '80s. I worked at the Portofino Hotel and Yacht Club in Redondo Beach, where he had his boat. Mm-hmm. And he was always sailing in and out, either sailing to Mexico or Hawaii, and he would come into the bar and restaurant where I worked and regale us with all kinds of adventures. I'll never forget the first time he walked into my bar. I looked at the bartender and I said, boy, I'd hate to run into him in a dark alley. (laughs) But then I got to know Bob. He's a formidable man with the tattoos. And And quite a presence and everything else. And the presence and all that. Um, We ran in the same circles. We had the same friends. Uh, He always had girlfriends. I had boyfriends. And so we never really... Four years later, we ended up single. And uh, it was the summer of 92. Wow. And we started sailing together over to Catalina Island. And... uh, we had a great time together. We went to, in particular, I'll never forget, uh, October, Catalina Island always does Pirate Weekend and everybody dresses as pirates. Cool. Well, Bob and I went, and Bob went as my costume, and I won Best Female Costume. Nice. It was a lot of fun. Nice. And shortly after their, that, he asked me to go to Tahiti with him. Now, I wasn't a sailor. I had sailed. But my idea of sailing was putting the sail cover on and off, helping with the food and the drinks. Yeah. That was, you know, but I never got seasick. And I was just a bartender and a cocktail waitress. You were leaving some big profession. It was the perfect lifestyle for me to say, yes, I can pick up and go. Bob was, okay, you're coming to Tahiti with me. And I said, okay, I'll go. What's the worst that could happen? Yeah. We could, it could not work out. What a better way to get to know somebody, right? Yeah, you, it works or it doesn't. Right. Yeah. So we set sail February 13th wow. of uh, 19, it was 1993, wow. February 13th. And we had such a good time. Cool. We, I learned how to sail on, you know, we left and that's, how I learned how to sail because I didn't know. I'll never forget the first time we left San Diego Harbor. Bob likes to And it was leave. just the two of you? No, we had okay. three other crew. There okay. was there was five of us and they were men that and they knew what everybody knew what they were doing except me. <laughs> but I could cook. Yeah. And I didn't get seasick and I learned as we went. But when we were leaving, we left in a storm. I found out Bob likes to leave in bad weather. Well, he sounds like a little bit of an adrenaline yeah, junkie, too. He yeah. likes the excitement of it all. Yes, he does. Yeah. <laughs> so we're in this storm, and he puts me behind the wheel and says, point it into the wind. We're all going up on the bow to reef the main. And I'm, okay. So I'm sitting there at the wheel, trying to point it into the wind, looking at this wind instrument. Not, I was so nervous, I didn't realize that that arrow going back and forth, I was supposed to keep it on the bow. Right? Oh no! He comes back a couple minutes later. What are you trying to throw us off the boat? I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. He says, Okay, just keep it on it. He gave me a compass heading. Yeah. And that was my beginning of sailing. I realized navigation. Before. I really have a lot to learn, but it's wonderful to learn while you're at sea, just going out. Because yeah. before I knew it, six months, eight months later, when we were crossing the ocean, coming back from Tahiti. I knew what I was doing. I really mm. knew what I was doing. Mm-hmm. So then when you went back, uh-huh. that's when you started Latitudes, Latitudes and Attitudes. And attitudes. Nice. Yeah, Bob has always been in the magazine business, so he knew yeah. that that's what he knew really well was doing magazines. Mm-hmm. And he, we had all these pictures, all these stories. It was perfect. Yeah. And so when he started the magazine, we were the feature story for the first several years, and everybody followed our trips cool. all over the world, and cool. and yeah, and it, it worked really well. Yeah, it was really well. Oh, it's a very popular magazine. Good. Did well. 
and, and now we have Cruising Outpost magazine. Yes, and I so. that's doing even better. It is. It is. <laughs> it's a. It's it's doing even better. We took everything we learned with Latitudes and Attitudes and made this even a better magazine. Yeah. How's the journey been with you guys since? It must be quite. Uh, an adventure <laughs> it's an adventure absolutely yeah. absolutely we've got a good balance now it's really nice we do the magazine we go to a lot of boat shows we threw parties all over the country and now we're expanding into the Caribbean cool. we sail on other people's boats a lot yeah. um, we get sailboat sailing we go on trawlers up in the Pacific Northwest mm. and we spend a, it's a lot of fun cool we're not cruising anymore on our own boat but you but know, you're still living we're the still sailing living, life, more or less. Right. Yeah. Right. And doing the magazine, when we put, we get all the stories from our readers and mm. the pictures, and so we're living their experiences, putting the magazine together, and so we're getting the great feel of the adventure. It's cool. working for us. We do miss it sometimes. We miss actually crossing oceans. Yeah. Yeah, I bet. It's really nice to be <laughs> at sea. And I was saying to Bob, you know, one of the things that I've experienced here that I just, I find absolutely fascinating and, and so I'm excited to get to know you guys uh -huh. a bit better is the amount of love for both you and Bob from, from the sailing community. And <laughs> it's, it's big. Yeah. Sorry. Right. But when I've heard about it, right. It's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. And just the experience that you guys went through and sorry <laughs> it's true but yeah but it's just true so it's a testimonial to to you two and well you know Bob has a special talent of being able to put together a magazine he it's his the feel of the magazine brings you in and immediately you feel like you're part of this wonderful family yeah cool. and boaters in general are when you run into them in the marina, if you're sailing or cruising immediately, poppers and princes, there's no, they mix together yeah. because it's all about you and your boat and you're immediately friends and where are you from? Okay, let's get together for dinner or let's go have a drink. And cool. you immediately, and this, it's a, it's a family. Mm -hmm. The boating lifestyle is definitely a family, the cruising lifestyle. Yeah. And we are such a cruising magazine and that's why our readers are so they're touched by the way Bob writes first mm. of all his mm -hmm. attitude that he does in every issue yeah cool. is always has a message and always pulls at your heartstrings cool we've been very fortunate very and cool it's wonderful to have all their support <laughs> we couldn't of course do this without them yeah you know yeah. it makes us happy it's been amazing to to see so. life is ups and downs yep you know yep. and there was a while there when we lost latitudes and attitudes we thought it was over mm. and it wasn't our readers saved us yeah. our readers saved us very cool and we got to work <laughs> and we are not going to let them down <laughs> awesome i love it i love it well thank you you're very welcome <laughs> and now katie and Jesse. So I'm Katie. Uh, Jesse and I are both from Michigan. Um, we grew up together because our dads are best friends. So yeah, we kind of grew up, grew up with sailing fathers who were really good friends and were on and around boats most of our lives, um, but didn't really know how to sail. <laughs> or care to <laughs> or care to sail we were so just kind of along for the ride quite experience then yes 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 we were always wondering you know when can we get off the boat when can we go play on land when can we go swimming um swimming. you know never really were there to make any decisions or care how you actually get a boat from a sailboat from a to b you know yeah um so this idea came from my dad who traveled America's Great Loop is what we traveled back in the 70s and he had talked about it for my whole life and um, we were actually both living out in California mm -hmm. at the time, at the, the idea suggestion time uh, in Tahoe area. My dad came to visit and he said, why don't you do America's Great Loop? And it was just kind of this big joke that snowballed into reality within one year. So yeah, we we spent two years on a sailboat that we bought for thirty five hundred dollars in Chicago. It was a nineteen seventy nine Cal twenty seven. Oh wow! And um, 
we left on a really so small budget. So just the budget. two of you for two mm -hmm. years? Yep, just the mm -hmm. two of us and her dog, Reggie, mm -hmm. who's still in the picture. And we had a cat for the first year. Mm -hmm. We had to find the cat a new home. Oh, the cat later didn't down fare so well? No. On the boat. <laughs> no, she... She loved it. She, yeah, she, she started peeing in the V-Bird in times where there was no laundry. Oh, no. Yeah, and it's very unfortunate. smell enough already. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and we didn't know about Canberra yet, so... Yeah. <laughs> cool. So, yeah, yeah, and uh, we left on a very small budget with very little experience, you know, zero ocean cruising experience. Yeah, we stopped to work three times along our trip, that's why... Mm -hmm. A one-year loop turned into two for us. Uh, mm -hmm. We made it from Michigan to Florida. That took about two months, three months, I'm sorry. Yeah. And uh, we waited tables and worked in restaurants for four months down in Fort Myers Beach. Wow. Took off for the Bahamas, um, spent a few months in the Bahamas, which were hands down best and worst days of our lives, I'd say. <laughs> Came back and worked in Key West for a little bit. Yeah. And um, it took five months for us to get from Key West, Florida, back to... Northern Michigan, where we started. Wow. But it, what yeah. did you What did you get out of it? Oh gosh. Um, well, I'm currently writing a book about all of that yeah. because my answer is not just a single sentence, but you know, probably hundreds of pages. Yeah. Um, we got a ton out of it. it. I mean, it was probably the most educating thing either of us had ever done. Uh, not only do you learn a lot about your best friend and yourself, um, about strangers. We learned about resource management, for example. <laughs> we learned about mechan mechanics, yeah. plumbing, sailing, so electric. So wind and weather as well. Navigation, yeah. you name it. I mean, we, we made every classic mistake in the book. Were people surprised to see just two young girls yeah. getting off a boat and yeah. sailing? It was weird. Um, and I, I say weird because when we left, you know, we didn't know what kind of people we were going to meet, who we were going to be traveling with, or who else was going to be out there. And um, as time passed, we definitely realized that we were kind of unique creatures. We really didn't meet anyone under 40. And um, almost everyone we traveled with was, you know, a retired couple. Mm -hmm. And we loved them. They became our best friends, you know, our moms and, your, and dads and yeah, aunts and uncles say, and grandmas or... and grandpas. And, <laughs> and um, so many people were looking out for us, which was really cool. But um, it really wasn't until we got down to Florida Keys and the Bahamas did we come across some other young mm -hmm. cruisers. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the selfish part of me wants to keep the entire trip a secret because <laughs> it was so great. Yeah. But the other part of me wants to push it on our generation. Yeah, Absolutely. everyone. Everyone, yeah, everyone, everyone. But and so why? Why would somebody want to do this? Well, I think, a, like... Um, a lot of people sit around thinking about it and mm -hmm. dreaming about it mm -hmm. and planning for it and saving money and you know uh, outfitting their boat and I think we're big advocates of just just go and do it yeah figure um, it out on the way yeah because you're never going to be prepared for what happens every day anyway yeah. so you may as well just figure it out on the way mm -hmm. <laughs> then be prepared for everything before you leave because then you're never going to leave. You're never going to be ready to leave. By the end of two years, we were finally like confident, confident cruisers, but it took a long time. And it took a long time too for us to trust ourselves and trust each other mm -hmm. um, and not other boaters first. Yeah. Does that make sense? It does. Like if we could do it, yeah. then anyone can because yes. we're just two dummies that <laughs> had no idea what we two were doing. Two Western gals with yeah. you know, very little boating experience and yeah. money. And, um, and it's know, all, it, it turns out to be all um, how you can figure it out once mm -hmm. things do go wrong. Mm -hmm. That's what everything is all about. Hoping we can be a little bit of an inspiration. Just be like, hey, yeah. if we can do it, Come on. So you have no reason to be scared. Are yeah. you two looking at doing another one? Would you would you go on another trip and do it again? Or? <laughs> we would we totally, talk about yeah. it. Yeah, we talk about it all the time. So here I am. I quit my job. I bought a boat in Panama. And, um, well, now all I have to do is just to untie the lines and... Go sailing. There's not really a fixed plan about this. It, this journey can be anything between three months or three years. So it's, it's all open, everything is possible, and 
you just want to be happy and just go with the flow and see what comes. It's not going to be any extreme kind of journey. It's it's not real. It's not about breaking records. It's you know, it's just about living with the forces, like with the wind and the water, and it's about reduction. You know, on a boat, you don't really, you know, you don't have all the stuff that you have in normal life, and you really have to cut back on things. And I think that's really interesting. I hope it's gonna bring you one step closer to putting your own dreams into reality. Thank you for watching. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you don't miss any of our wonderful and informative episodes. And next episode, part two, sailing to Cuba.